How many of us have ever been in situations where the right words just wouldn't come? Something happens or something is said, and we want to have the, the clever response that's going to make everyone laugh and, and think, uh, what a wonderful person this is who said such a clever thing. Or we wish that the, the, the insightful words would come that people would, would listen to what we say and think, wow, that's really deep. This guy or this woman is so smart. Or, you know, in my case, perhaps, too often, <laughs> I, I wish I had the right words to put a person back in his or her place, you know? The, the right uh, cutting remark, the right sar bit of sarcasm to, to bring a person down a notch or two. We, you know, we're human beings. What are you going to say? But the words don't come until, you know, you're lying in bed that night or some other time where it's completely ineffective or inappropriate. The right words come and you think, oh, wow, I wish I'd said that or I wish I'd done that thing. But the right time and the right place are gone. And then there are times in our lives when things happen Things that we couldn't even have planned or hoped for. Things that are so terrific that it just feels like all the, the tumblers or the locks of the universe have fallen into place and the whole thing just opens up for us. And you think, you know, if I had planned this, it couldn't have come out this way. And there's that bit of what C.S. Lewis called joy, where it's everything in the universe feels right and feels 
the way that it should feel, the way we wish it could feel all the time. But it can't. There is a right place and a right time for many things. And in this gospel passage from Luke's gospel today, we see the right people coming together in the right place at the right time for wonderful things to happen and for the Word of God to be clear to everyone who will listen. As you remember, in Luke's Gospel, we are on the way with Jesus to Jerusalem. We've been there, going there a long time, haven't we? Several, uh, several months in a row now we've been preaching from Luke and, and moving from Galilee into Jerusalem, where Jesus is going to have the major confrontation of his life with the principalities and the powers. And on the way, as is his wont, Jesus goes to synagogue on the Sabbath. And again, as is his wont, he's teaching there in the synagogue. But as he teaches, something interesting happens. A woman comes forward. And according to Luke, she has had a spirit in her for 18 years that has doubled her over, has bent her over. 18 years. 18 years of not being able to look people in the eye. 18 years of looking at their feet and the ground. 18 years of not being able to see the sky while standing up. 18 years of humility, humiliation, maybe pain. 18 years, it's a long time to bear an affliction. And well might the evangelist call it a spirit because it certainly probably had become a part of her. Her, her condition, her ailment had become part of her identification. It had become part of who she is. Who she was. Bent over. Unable to look up. Unable to receive the kind of respect that we all take for granted when we look one another in the eye. It is a submissive position. And it certainly had affected her. It had to have affected her. She was probably known to most of the people in this synagogue, men and women, if, if she was a, a, a citizen of that town. They would have known who she was. They probably would have seen her on the streets. And we don't know that she came to Jesus for healing, do we? It just says, and then there was a woman in the room. It doesn't say that she was coming to Jesus. Maybe it was just her want to be in synagogue on Sabbath as Jesus 